definitely acting classes if, if they didn't come from that. Um, Cause that comes up a lot where people are like, oh really I should take acting? I'm like, that'd be a good place to start. Yeah, uh, improv obviously so that you really quick and can switch in and out and take direction quickly and know how to shave off two seconds and not lose the character. All right. That to me is really the only advice because everything else from there, everybody's gonna figure out their own style, what they love doing best, whether it's dialects or really s solid, amazing animated characters or really real um, video game characters, all of the above, voice matching. I kind of, again, started in voiceover right around sort of the renaissance of Disney animation. So sort of in the late 90s. And there started to be a need because suddenly Little Mermaid was a huge hit and Beauty and the Beast and um, Aladdin. And so Disney character voices had started to put out looking for voice matches. <laughs> and right around the same time, um, a, LucasArts was looking for voice matches for the classic characters from the original trilogy. So I was lucky enough to book uh, Princess Leia. And um, that was, I just sort of, it was both a combination of learning it from some really amazing teachers who really specialized in it, as well as just spending hours figuring it out. And this is, this is back in the day of cassette tapes. So, you know, rewinding and, and VHSs. So a lot of rewinding and fast forwarding. In awe of, you know, Joan Cusack and the incredible sounds that come out of her mouth and the voice that she came up with for Jesse, I feel really lucky to be, you know, her official voice match for so many ancillary projects and, you know, theme park attractions and parades and live shows and toys. Everyone knows your name, Woody. <laughs> voice matching is, sort of the, think of it as an Oreo, uh, sort of an oral illusion, Oreo, an Oreo illusion, an oral illusion. Um, so you're tricking the ear into believing that it's that particular character or celebrity or voice. So um, the idea, it's, it's different from impersonations because in impersonations, which are more sort of like what Robin Williams became really you know, famous for doing, bouncing in and out of, you're kind of broadening it. I would like to do now something very special, a new Russian rap group called Run CCCP. Just enough so that everybody gets who you're doing. And it's not supposed to sound like identical where you could seamlessly put it together with the original. But the idea in voice matching, which is used a lot in like ADR and uh, you know, for films when you're cleaning up the sound or replacing a line maybe uh, that's been rewritten after the, the shoot, um, you're trying to get so close every little tiny iteration that they could seamlessly edit it and hopefully the audience doesn't catch on that it's a different, you know, a different actor in there. We had a couple of rounds of auditions and then callbacks. And I definitely didn't sleep before the callback. I, I stayed up, by then I knew what it was for. And that was probably the worst thing they could have done for me because the idea of actually being a, a lead main voice in one of the classic attractions like Pirates or Haunted Mansion was beyond belief to this little Disney geek who had been a cast member and who just wanted to live in the parks. For better or for worse. <laughs> I really didn't think that that was gonna happen, so. 